Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time for some more Fighting Fantasy Classics. Inspired blatantly by the fact that Fighting Fantasy Fest 5 is happening in a couple of weeks time, I thought I fancied another bash at Freeway Fighter because in my previous attempt I did relatively well and was let down mostly by just terrible dice rolls to be honest. <laughs> So here we are, that lovely old cover. Ah, that takes me back. Now, before I dive in, there's something I need to get off my chest. Something that's been bothering me for the last few days. It comes round every few years or so. Many, many years ago, I played a fantasy game book that I cannot remember the title of. I only played it once, succeeded, and it was hard. It was a game book in which you played a young Aztec or Incan or Mayan hero, I can't remember which, one of those three South American cultures. And you had to go off in a quest to vanquish a powerful demon lord who was going to do something like destroy the world or blot out the light of the sun so that everyone would live in eternal darkness. I think he might have had something to do with darkness and fear. Possibility, you might have had something to do with the form of a giant bat, but I'm not sure I remember that correctly. That might be something else. I remember it involved going into the underworld of your whichever of the three cultures it was, and it involved that game with that's played with severed heads on a square court with holes in the walls around the edge, but it's kind of a precursor to tennis. That was a pretty hard section of the book. It wasn't a choose your own adventure style book with no rules and just pure story. It definitely had rules and it had its own rule system. It may have been part of a short series of three or four books. I cannot for the life of me remember the title. And if I can make it to Fighting Fantasy Fest 5 this year, I'll probably be asking a lot of people. Almost everybody. <laughs> oh, if any of you guys watching recognize that book from my description, feel free to let me know in the comments section, I'll see if I can look it up. Anyway, for now we're getting back into Freeway Fighter. It's been a while. Uh, I decided that for this game, we would need a suitably heroic character. A character who is good with cars. So I decided we would create a character called Clark. Okay, not this way. There we go, Clark. Clark is not a very memorable member of the community. He's got a surname for his first name. For that, you can blame his father, Jeremy. In fact, Jeremy's far more prolific, and most people just refer to Clark as Jeremy's son. He likes cars, isn't necessarily the brightest spark. Let's see how his adventure goes. And yes, I know exactly what I did when I was naming that character, and I blatantly pointed it out to you with the description there. So, Freeway Fighter is a fighting fantasy game. An interactive adventure in which you become the hero. After a rogue killer virus, a vast barbaric wilderness is all that remains of the world. Survivors like you either live in scattered, fortified towns or roam outside as bandits. Life is lawless and dangerous. Your mission is to cross the wilderness to the far distant oil refinery at San Angelo and bring vital supplies back to the peaceful town of New Hope. Even in the armed Dodge Interceptor you are given, the journey will be wild and perilous. Will you survive? This game book has been designed for optimum challenge on the Adventurer difficulty mode. For newcomers to Fighting Fantasy, we recommend Adventurer or Free Read modes. For older readers already familiar with printed versions of this game book, we recommend Hardcore Hero mode. Hardcore Hero mode does present an additional challenge, but some books are hard enough already. 
And I want to stand a chance, so maybe I won't do that for this run. Adventurer. Play Free Wi Fighter exactly how Ian Livingston designed it. Very little has been changed from a printed version. Your starting stamina is calculated by rolling 2d6 plus 24. That's more than the usual 2d6 plus 12. You're also given unlimited bookmarks, which act like placing your fingers between the pages. Hardcore Hero. If you've beaten Freeway Fighter in Adventure Mode, well, yes, once a very long time ago, when I was a teenager, or have read the printed form of this gamebook before, now face your ultimate challenge. Your starting skill in your car's firepower is calculated by rolling 1d6 plus 4 instead of 1d6 plus 6, thus making you and your vehicle weaker and less skilled. You still receive unlimited bookmarks. Helpful. Free read. Play Freeway Fighter like an old school cheater. Free read is set up in the, the same as adventurer mode, but is different in that it gives you free options to easily negotiate your way through the book. Back button. You can move backwards to the previous page. Should you take the wrong direction, you can now back up and choose another path. Free choice button. You can unlock all links, irrespective of whether they are available, so you can easily negotiate tricky parts of the story where you require certain items. And the Heal Me button. You are able to heal yourself at any time, so you will never run out of stamina. Which difficulty will you choose? We'll go for Adventurer for now. I haven't defeated this book recently enough to attempt it on Hardcore Hero. You have chosen the Adventurer difficulty mode. Before continuing, you must calculate your initial stamina. Your stamina score is a measure of, how of your physical fitness and constitution. The higher your stamina score, the longer you will be able to survive. You must roll two dice and add 24 to the number rolled. This is then entered in the stamina box on your adventure sheet, meaning we're either going to be taking a lot of damage, or the car has stamina and that... Hmm. And we're just more vulnerable outside of it. Stamina will go up and down during your journey, but if your stamina falls to zero, you die, and your adventure is over. If your stamina is getting low, remember to use your med kit. Let's roll. Wow, you got good. Clark, son of Jeremy, is tough. Your roll of 11 plus a base of 24 means your stamina is 35. Your skill score is a measure of your driving, mechanical, and fighting abilities. Let's see how naff Jeremy's son is. Skill may increase or decrease slightly during your journey, but may never exceed its initial value. Your starting skill is determined by rolling one die and adding six to the number. This is then entered in the skill box on your adventure sheet. Well, wow! Jeremy taught his son well. Clark can drive and fight, swear at people, punch BBC presenters, buy pubs and farms, who knows. Your luck score is a measure of fate and fortune is at wait for a one. <laughs> is a measure of fate and fortune in your life. Your starting luck is determined by rolling one die and adding six to the number. This is then entered in a luck box on your adventure sheet. Wow! Four plus six is ten. Your car's armour and weaponry will also be determined by dice rolls. The first feature is known as firepower. Watch as he's, like, driving a rust bucket on wheels. <laughs> the firepower score is a measure of the car's engine power and the effectiveness of its machine guns. Your car's starting firepower is determined by rolling one die and adding six to the number. Well, wow, ten. We have a dangerous car. The armor score is a measure of the car's defenses. Your car's starting armor is determined by rolling two dice and adding 24 to the number, so basically the same as stamina. Ooh! Clark is tougher than his car, in theory. 32 is not bad, though. Once you have rolled and need to learn about weapons, fuel, and other equipment, we turn to this section. In addition to its machine guns and an unlimited supply of bullets, the car also carries missile weapons which may be used during combat. 
You have at your disposal four rockets, three canisters of iron spikes, and two rear-mounted oil spares, with one canister of oil each, which may be used when the option is given. It's almost as if the car's equipment list is more important than our own equipment list. We have nothing. The car also has nothing. Okay. Fairly respectable stats. We also have a potential map, which may include some of the options we took last time. I don't know. Right. Fuel may be acquired during the adventure and will be added to your adventure sheet. Other modifications and accessories for your car, which are acquired during the journey, will also appear there. Credits of the emergency currency units of the 21st century. Known, no familiar, known familiarly as creds. You start your journey with 200 credits, but are likely to spend and or acquire more credits along the way. However, most people distrust credits and prefer to barter. You may, for instance, have to use some of your medkit in barter. It's time for a vid news bulletin. <laughs> vid news bulletin. Dateline 21st of July 2022. Fighting Fantasy Fest 4 was in early sept late August or early September 2022 and I remember spending time at the adventure joking with people about the freeway fighter apocalypse asking how people were handling the apocalypse how it was going <laughs> yeah I, I even got to remind Ian that he <laughs> set the 21st of July as the day for the apocalypse and we were apparently already in it and he had a little fun snicker at that The disaster happened just at a time when the world was beginning to enjoy itself. Nobody could have predicted such a catastrophe. World War III had been averted and the power blocks of East and West were now working towards world peace and unity. Bear in mind, this was written back in the 80s, you know. Revolutionary farming techniques had all but eradicated hunger and increased mobility had led to world to people's greater understanding of one another. The morning of the 21st of July, 2022, had started just like any other. It was going to be a hot day and the news on the Holovision was good. A government spokesperson proudly announced that solar energy now powered 90% of homes and 70% of industry. The three-day working week was now the norm, and England was to play the United States in the soccer finals of the World Cup in Sydney. However, there were only hours to go before the beginnings of the collapse of civilization. Later that day, an unknown disaster broke out in New York and spread with such devastating speed and fatality that before the government and scientists realized what was happening, half the population was dead. The disease spread throughout the world, carried by aeroplane passengers. I know, like ahead of its time, right? <laughs> and decimated population centers everywhere. All attempts at quarantine were useless. Four days after the outbreak, 85% of the world's population were dead. And the rest were probably living in their homes under government mandate. While politicians had Partygate and ate cake and laughed at us. If you're English, you know, or actually, no, no, no. If you live in the world, you probably remember the everyone has to stay in their homes thing from a little while ago. Communications, essential services, transport, and administration had broken down completely. I just hope that communications, essential services, transport, and administration are working in a few weeks' time to help me get to the convention. There was no one left to try and fight to find the cause of the outbreak. It might have been a mutated virus or some lethal germ unknowingly released from a chemical warfare laboratory. It was mere speculation and nobody really cared as survival was the top priority. The speed with which civilization fell into ruins was frightening. Most survivors didn't know why, why they still lived and didn't know how to go on living. Brute force became the law. Riots, looting, destruction and drunkenness were commonplace. 
people would even kill for a can of beans. Large cities were soon abandoned due to a lack of food and risk of disease. Six months after the disaster, there remained two kinds of people. Those who wanted order again, and those who reveled in the disorder. The former grouped themselves into small towns and built defences around them. Inside, they appointed leaders and began the task of self-sufficiency. These fortress towns became the homes of the military, farmers, doctors, and people concerned with the rebuilding of civilization. The other group lived a wild and brutal existence outside. They were the new barbarians. Roaming the land in cycle or car gangs, they terrorized or wiped out any small pockets of civilization they came across. You are one of the lucky survivors living in a fortress town which has been named New Hope. You are working on the design of an early warning system to protect the town when you hear a knock on your door. A knock at your door, indeed. It is two members of the town council and they look very excited. They tell you that their radio has just picked up a message from a fortified oil refinery near San Anglo in the south. The people there are willing to exchange 10,000 litres of petrol for grain and seeds to improve their, home pr their food production. The inhabitants of New Hope could certainly use the petrol for generators and agricultural machinery. Being offered 10,000 litres of this rare commodity is too good an opportunity to miss, especially as there are surplus stocks of grain and seed. The Council have agreed to the deal and are now looking for somebody to undertake the journey to San Anglo to deliver the sacks and drive the petrol tanker back to New Hope. And so they decided to pick on Clark. Jeremy's son. Although it does seem that Clark is a somewhat capable individual, as is his Dodge Interceptor. It'll be a long and dangerous journey through lawless country. The two men tell you that they think you're the best trained person to undertake such a mission and ask if you would like to volunteer. How considerate of them. They tell you that a Dodge Interceptor will be prepared for the journey. It will be fitted with machine guns, radio, roof-mounted rocket launcher, ram bars, loudspeaker and various defences including rear oil spray, tyre shredding spikes, armour plating and bulletproof windows. These things kit up. You do not need convincing as the benefit to New Hope will be enormous. This pioneer journey might be the start of the link between the new societies trying to bring out about civilization if you succeed. You tell them that you will do the job, and begin your preparations immediately. Over the next two days, you supervise the modifications to the Interceptor. When it is finally ready, it looks like a battle car. I don't remember battle cars? Nice old game. Never got to play it myself. You check it out one last time to ensure that the weapons work and that all your equipment has been packed away in the various compartments. You run through the checklist. Map. Flashlight, medkit, compass, food, water, fuel, full fuel canister, two spare wheels, flat you fix, instant puncher repairer, and tools. Finally, you put on the shoulder holster for your revolver and leather jacket, which carries your bullets and knife. Satisfied that you are ready, you climb into the driver's seat. Peering through the narrow steel slit that is now your windscreen, you see the town's population gathered to wave you goodbye. You start up the engine of the Interceptor and crawl forward to the gates leading to the outside world. It is over a year since you last ventured between beyond the walls of New Hope and you are excited at the prospect of what you will find. Now turn over. The first thing to strike you as you cruise along the road is the speed with which everything has fallen into decay. You hadn't realised how much maintenance was needed to support civilization. All around, buildings are falling into ruin. Abandoned cars litter the roads in rusted disarray. Grass and weeds have grown rampant and everywhere... Oh, not and everywhere, sorry. Grass and weeds have grown rampant everywhere, with nobody to hold them back, and packs of dogs and other wild animals roam freely. Let's check. The map does include our previous playthrough attempts, so... All over the place. Well, we'll have some fun with it anyway. It 
it's tricky because we have the blitz race but we also have the area in a different direction with the tube and I seem to remember needing to siphon petrol out of a vehicle with a tube in the original adventure maybe we can go and do the blitz race then come back from the tube I'm not sure because some of the road sections are one way some are two way you stop at a small town, some 15 kilometers from New Hope, and switch off your engine. I wonder if they've moved a few of the encounters around, or probably not. Suddenly it is deathly silent, apart from the eerie howl of a dog somewhere down the street. You're tempted to get out of the car to explore, but realize that this is an unnecessary risk. You're about to start your engine again, when suddenly the sound of a shotgun breaks the silence. Let's get out of the car and investigate. We could just drive off and go, nope, someone just shot a gun. Let's see what's going on. You run across the road and press yourself against the wall of the building, half expecting another shot to ring out. Your heart beats fast as you creep forward slowly to the corner of the building and look around. There is nobody in sight down the narrow street. You take one step around the corner and then a voice shouts out, Okay, that's far enough. One more step and you'll be full of holes. Where are you from? We can tell him we're from New Hope or we're a lone warrior living nowhere in particular. No, I'll... Might as well just tell him the truth. Gotta watch out for that garage. It's a trap. A man suddenly appears out of a doorway and walks towards you with his shotgun pointed at you. He looks at you sternly and says, that's where I'm heading. Been cycling for over a week since my station wagon was ambushed and my wife and son were killed. Stopped here to get some cans of food from a supermarket back there when some crazy dogs attacked me. Shot one of them and the others ran off. My name's Johnson. Pleased to meet you. Probably not Lionel or Jervis, but you never know. He puts down his shotgun and extends his hand for you to shake. He tells you that he is a builder by trade and asks how, how much further it is to New Hope and whether he is likely to be let in. You reply that it's only another 15 kilometers and his chances are good. They need skilled people. You also tell him about your mission and he warns you not to stop at Joe's garage, which is about 8 kilometers out of town. They ain't got no petrol. They just rob people who stop there. You thank Johnson for the advice, wish him luck and walk back to your interceptor. Its powerful engine roars into life when you turn the ignition key and you screech off once again. You're soon out of town, zigzagging around wrecked cars and fallen trees along the road. Further ahead, you can see that the road joins the main highway south. There is a small filling station at the junction named Joe's Garage. You stop as you're intrigued by the hot rod parked around the side, looking clean and in running condition. A young woman suddenly comes out of the office wearing a t-shirt and blue jeans. She smiles and says, Hi, can I help you? We could talk to her or drive the fuck away. We've been told this is a trap. Despite the hazard of trying to avoid abandoned cars, the highway is wide enough for you to gather plenty of speed. It's exciting to drive so freely without fear of being hauled in by the police for violating some traffic regulation or another. You smile as your speed reaches 190 kilometers per hour, but your joy is short-lived. You suddenly see a red Chevrolet, heavily reinforced with steel plating coming straight towards you. Somebody is sitting in a small turret on the roof, a machine gunner. You think to yourself that maybe having to deal with the police in the old days wasn't so bad compared to compared with what is coming at you now. You breathe in deeply and get ready to press the machine gun fire button. It's time for some car combat. Okay, a dodge interceptor against the red Chevy. My goodness, we seem to be good. Let's fight. We could fire a rocket or save it. I don't know. Okay, the red dice are for the enemy. Our car's been hurt. Better. Enemy car gets hurt. Q. 
keep up that damage, Clark. You can do it. Blow him away! Uh-oh. Ah, oh, yes, we have the sticky dice. That's right. We took an initial scratch or graze. Okay, we've taken another one. But we have... He oh, for God's sake. No, no, no. Oh, well. <laughs> Fair enough, I suppose. Ooh, think we win by one? We do. Final round, potentially. Yeah, that's... Oh, no. Come on, Clark. You can do this. Blow him away! You stop your interceptor to examine the burning wreck. Who were these people and why did they attack you without warning? You shake your head and hit the accelerator, eager to reach your destination. <coughs> <coughs> You're passing a security truck and thinking about all the money inside it which is now useless when suddenly a voice comes through on your radio above the crackling static. Is one of the New Hope's leaders. She tells you how a gang of bikers have just attacked New Hope, killing eight people in the process. After a short battle, they were eventually beaten off. She warns you to be on the lookout for them as they have kidnapped Sinclair, the council leader. I wonder if Johnson was prying for information, checking the distance. Or if he was genuinely trying to get in, because he said he was riding a cycle after his van got done over, didn't he? I like to think Johnson wasn't a spy getting in there to open the gates to let the bikers in, but you never can tell. I do know, but if we hadn't stopped to speak to him, we would still have got this call. So I don't believe our actions had something to do with this. You acknowledge the message and say goodbye. After an hour or so of driving without any further incident, you notice that your petrol gauge is dropping. The interceptor is very heavy on petrol. You stop and pour the contents of the fuel canister into the tank, realizing that you will have to find more, find some more petrol soon. And we didn't stop at a petrol station where we were warned they have no petrol. A few kilometers further and you know that your luck has easily run out. There must have been a car crash at the time of a disaster which caused a huge tailback of now abandoned cars. It is impossible to continue along the highway. You reverse back to the last exit and drive off the highway. You must decide which way to head along the road which crosses over it. East or west? Hmm. I think Fighting Fancy Rules says we head east here, correct? Although we can't rely on it completely for this book. You pass an ambulance parked off the road to your right, but see no sign of life. Look, it's an ambulance, there may be some medical supplies. We'll stop and investigate, even though I know this is a trap. You park your interceptor and walk back to the ambulance. The driver's cab is empty, although the ambulance looks as if it has been driven quite recently. We'll open the door and look inside. Dangerous, I know. You turn the handle and pull. An explosion is accompanied by a brilliant white flash and deafening noise. The door was booby-trapped. Ow! The explosion sends you reeling backwards. The door hangs off the hinges, but there is nothing inside the ambulance. Its owner will probably be on his way now to see who he has caught. You feel too weak to reach the interceptor and decide to crawl into hiding. We could hide in the grass or hide under the ambulance. We're going to have more cover. You know, if he just looks down on the grass, he might see us if we hide under the ambulance. Unless the guy's prepared. Wait, are we going to leave a massive blood trail? I think we hide under the ambulance, although this could be risky. Oh, well.
Lying perfectly still under the ambulance, you hear the sound of footsteps approaching. The pain in your side is severe, making you grip your revolver tightly. Suddenly, a man's voice shouts, Hey, stupid! Think I can't follow a trail of blood? Throw your gun out and ease yourself out from under that ambulance with your hands up. We could obey him and get robbed or roll out from under the ambulance, firing our gun. I mean, Clark is the son of Jeremy, so he's going to come out firing. You know your chances are slim, but there is no alternative. This bandit has got you cold. Ignoring the pain, you roll out from underneath the ambulance and fire two wild shots at your unseen adversary. They both miss, for you suddenly see a scruffy man wearing a red headband jump up from behind a rock returning fire at you. Your skill is reduced at one point for the duration of the fight because of your injury only for the duration of the fight, that's great. If you're shot more than once during this combat, then this skill will be reduced permanently. Right. Okay. I can't fire a rocket at this one. Ah, uh, that's a draw. Both miss. Excellent. Look, any time we don't take damage is a good time. Slam. We're going to have to shoot at least twice more. Oh, we're hit. We're rolling damage instead of taking the standard two points fighting fancy damage. I now see why we had additional stamina. Oh, okay, it's a draw. Good. So close to that permanent skill loss. Don't you dare do it. Bang! Oh, so close to killing him. And we don't get to use luck in combat. Last exchange of gunfire. And he goes down. No permanent skill loss. You search through the dead man's pockets and find 150 credits and a pair of knuckle dusters. You pocket your findings and when you feel strong enough, limp back to your interceptor wondering how long your medkit will last. So there's nothing useful in the ambulance. You turn the ignition key and burn up the road heading east. Well, we got to the ambulance. You flash past a road sign which shows a turning to the south immediately ahead. We could drive south or keep cruising past. Um... We want to go to Rockville. These both lead to the same place by the look of it. Turning south, does that mean I turn south to these options or not? I'm not sure. And you know what? Since I've been playing for a bit of a while, I think I'll end the episode here because I forgot to put a clock beside the screen to help me keep track of time. And I'll spend a little time pondering my next decision. Alright guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll look forward to seeing you all in the very next one, which should be up pretty soon. I wish you all goodbye for now, though, and see you all next time. Cheerio, everyone. <laughs>